Swamp Runner, Mud Skipper, and Beaver Dam. Who makes the best mud motor kit? Stick around and find out, because we gonna send it. Send it. If you like John boats, mud motors, and things that make you wanna just yell, yeah, yeah, then you've come to the right place, partner. If this is your first time on the channel, make sure you go right down below here, hit that subscribe button and a little bell thingy right next to it so that you won't miss any of our upcoming videos. So right off the rip, I'm gonna go ahead and get this out there. I am not getting paid by any of these companies to do this review. I am not sponsored by any of these companies. And I do not have any affiliation with any of these companies. I'm doing this review because I have a bunch of mud motor builds coming up this year for our YouTube channel, and I need to know which one is gonna best suit me and my needs. So the focus of this review is going to be on facts, not on opinion. Now I will leave my opinion of these three kits at the very, very end, but for the duration of this video, I'm not going to be talking about my opinion of these kits. We're going to go over a side-by-side -side comparison of factual information, how much they weigh, what their measurements are, what the material thickness is, what the design is, and we're going to look at them on a non-opinionated, non-biased basis for the whole first part of this video. And like I said, at the very, very end, if you want to see what my opinion is and what I'm going to decide to run after this review, then you can see that at the very end of the video. But this review, unpaid, unsponsored, and purely based on facts. So the other reason we're doing this review is because all three of these companies have come out with new designs and they've made upgrades to their kits and they're all completely different than they were even a year or two ago when a lot of other people were doing reviews. So I want to see the newest, latest, greatest that every single one of these companies has to offer. As of the filming of this video, January 2021, these are the most updated kits that you can get out on the market right now and that's what I want to compare. What's new out on the market? And this video is going to be very, very long, but I wanted to make sure that I covered all the detail, all the up close and get as much fact and information out to you guys as possible. So if you're pressed for time right now and you can't watch this entire video, save it for later and make sure that you have time to watch the entire thing so that you can make an informed decision before you purchase your next mud motor. Now that we got that out of the way, let's get into the review. So all the kits that we're going to be comparing in this review are for the 13 horsepower Predator, which I have three of them right back here. And that is why I'm going to run a different motor on each one of these kits. So I ain't got to waste time swapping them back and forth. So let's go over to three mud motor kits today and the pricing for each. We're going to talk about the actual real cost of these mud motors, not what they advertise because what they all advertise is not what the true cost is because you still have to pay for tax shipping and all that other stuff. So we're gonna get down to the bottom dollar of what these things cost. So first up, let's go over the Swamp Runner kit. The kit itself, which they call their medium kit, was $549, which is the base price of the kit. To ship it to me was $65.40, bringing us to a grand total of $613.40 and 40 cents for the Swamp Runner kit. Next up is gonna be the Mud Skipper kit, which they call their Prime kit, and it goes for $487. Now they charge me a total of $40.52 for tax, another $40 for shipping, and $45.99 for the extra handle that I had to buy. The reason that I had to buy an extra handle is because I wanted all three of these review kits to be exactly the same, as close as I could possibly get them. Well, the handle that the Prime kit comes with is not bent like any of the other companies, so I wanted to make sure that it was equal to the other two that we're going to be comparing it to, so I had to pay extra for a bent handle. Which brings our total cost of the Mud Skipper kit to $619.42. Now, had I not had to buy a separate handle to make all these kits equal, we would have been looking at about $564-ish, somewhere around there is what I estimated. And then last up is going to be the Beaver Dam Mud Runners kit. Now, this kit's a little bit different because it not only fits the medium sizes, just like the Swamp Runner and the Mud Skipper do, it also fits the larger size motor, so like the 670 Predator, the Briggs, the Hondas, all of your big or V-twins. You don't have to buy a separate kit for it. So if you wanted to start with like a 13 horsepower Predator like we're going to, you'd use that same kit and upgrade to a V-twin later on down the road if you wanted to. The Swamp Runner and the Mud Skipper, you have to buy a large kit for those. So another thing to consider. So as far as cost for the Beaver Dam kit, the kit itself was $575. Shipping was $75, bringing us to a grand total of $650. First item up for review is going to be shipping. Guess what? They all came in a cardboard box and nothing was damaged in shipping. I'm not gonna waste your time or my time unboxing all this junk. And nobody really wants to sit on YouTube for 30 minutes and listen to. Oh my God, it's a box. Look, there's paper and it makes so much noise. And there's another box. 
Oh, and there's a box too. Next up for review is these transom brackets. I have the logo down here of each one of the companies next to their transom bracket so you can see which one is which. They all have basically the exact same design. Their only difference is the thickness of material that they use to build them out of, how much bite they have on the transom, so how far down they are from top to bottom, and then how wide they are from side to side but they all attach basically the same way and they all have a grease fitting on the back. Using this digital micrometer, I was able to go through and measure each one of these hole sizes. They are all exactly one inch, so any of these kits will fit the engine brackets for the other kits, so they are kind of universal in size. So our first measurement up is gonna be thickness of material. This is the Swamp Runner, and we are at 0 0.23, 0 0.23 over there as well, and 0.23. 22.23 on this side as well. Next up is the mud skipper. 0.23 on this side, 0 0.23, 0 0.24 on this side, and 0.23 on this side as well. Next up is the beaver dam. 0.39 on that side, 0.39 on that side, and 0.39 on this side. Next, we'll look at the actual width of the transom that can fit inside of here. So we'll go through each one individually. First up is the Swamp Runner, and it looks like it's coming in at about two and five eighths. Next up, the Mud Skipper. This one looks like it's about two and seven eighths, maybe just a hair more. And the Beaver Dam is right at two and three quarter inches. So all of these seem to be pretty similar in thickness of transom that these will fit over. They're all within about a quarter of an inch of each other. Next up, we'll measure the width of each one and how wide they are on each transom bracket. First up is the Swamp Runner and it looks like we're at six and three eighths of an inch. Next up, the Mud Skipper is right at six inches wide and the Beaver Dam coming in at 10 inches wide. Next, we're going to look at how much depth each one of these transom brackets has, and what a lot of people refer to this is how much bite they have on the actual transom. So we'll start with the Swamp Runner. It looks like we're at about two and almost three quarters of an inch. Next up is this Mud Skipper, and we're at three and just a little over seven eighths, so almost four inches on that one. And the Beaver Dam looks like it's about three and a half inches. So next up, we'll take a look at how much each one of these weigh. I've got my shipping scale out here, so it's about the closest thing I've got to some kind of certified scale, but this will do for now. So first up is going to be the Swamp Runner, and it comes in at about 5 pounds, 14.6 ounces. Next, the Mud Skipper at 6 pounds, 8.7 ounces, and the Beaver Dam coming in at 13 pounds, 13.7 ounces. Next item up is going to be the actual engine mounts and these gimbals that go onto the transom mount that we just looked at. They all have a overall similar design with just a few design differences between the three. The Swamp Runner and this Mud Skipper are the two that are closest in design. They're almost exactly the same. The only difference is the Swamp Runner has a little bit deeper bend right here for the motor to sit in, so the motor sits just a little bit lower. The bracket is a little bit longer right here versus the Mud Skipper over here. And both of the shafts that actually go down into the transom bracket are the exact same length. Then the Beaver Dam is a similar design. It's a lot longer because it has five different adjustment holes versus the Swamp Runner and the Mud Skipper that only have two adjustment holes on each one. This one also appears to be slightly longer, but it does come with a collar adapter that you can put up on the top if you have a transom that needs the motor to sit up higher versus these two, which do not come with that. So if you're running one of these two kits and the transom bracket is sitting too low and it's actually causing it to contact the back of the transom, you would have to come up with some type of adapter like that, which is why this shaft is actually longer than those two. Another difference that I noticed is the Swamp Runner and the Beaver Dam both offer a hole in the bottom of this threaded tube here so that you can put in a cotter pin to hold your engine bracket in place. The Mud Skipper does not have a hole anywhere in the bottom of the shaft so that you can put one of these cotter pins in. The Swamp Runner does, and so does the Beaver Dam. Now we won't waste a whole lot of time here because they all measure exactly the same, but these are 0.46 in thickness on each one of these brackets and they're also 0.46 on each one of these as well. The last difference I noticed in the three kits on these engine brackets is right here. There's a zerk fitting or a grease fitting on both sides of the Swamp Runner so that you can grease this pivot point. On the Mud Skipper it does not have that on either one of them and the Beaver Dam also has zerk fittings on both. So Swamp Runner, Beaver Dam, you can grease them. 
the mud skipper, you cannot. As far as overall length goes, the shortest is going to be the Swamp Runner, and it's coming in at just about 10 inches. The Mud Skipper is 11 and a half, and the Beaver Dam is about 14 and three quarters. Now for the weights, we'll start with Swamp Runner. 16 pounds, 13.7 ounces. The Mud Skipper kit. 15 pounds, 10.1 ounces, and the beaver dam, 17 pounds and 0.7 ounces. Next up is going to be the adapters and couplers to get the power from the engine to the long tail shaft. Now immediately I noticed that the Swamp Runner and Mud Skipper have almost the exact same design with just a few differences between the two, so let's go over those first. The Swamp Runner has two Zerk fittings for grease so that you can put grease inside this coupler right here. The Mud Skipper has two grease cups. Now, I don't know if you can change these out and put Zerk fittings in. I'm pretty sure you probably could. You just have to find one with the right thread pitch. But the cups and the Zerk fittings are the first thing I noticed that are different. The next thing I noticed that's the same is they're almost the exact same height and the method for squeezing the shaft. So the shaft goes in here, the long tail would be coming out, and they use these bolts right here to squeeze onto the side of that shaft and keep it from coming out of place. The wing nut design is a little bit different. This has like a threaded piece that goes through the bolt and then these are actually welded onto it. So those are a little bit different, but it's basically the same attachment method. On the Swamp Runner, on this end where the shaft goes in, we're looking at about 0.18 inches in thickness. And on this back end, we're looking at about 0.32 inches in thickness. The Mud Skipper, we're looking at on the shaft end about 0.17. And on this end, we're looking at about 0.28. The beaver dam is a little bit different design. This portion here is actually aluminum instead of like the swamp runner and the mud skipper here. These are both steel. They're magnetic and a magnet sticks to it, but this one's all aluminum. And then it has a steel end over here that actually bolts onto this and acts as almost like a secondary safety measure. So if one of these two bolts were to come loose, like on the swamp runner or the mud skipper, if they were to come loose, the shaft could come out. On this, you have a secondary point with two more bolts holding this in, so it looks like that's kind of a built-in safety measure. Now, it is shorter than the other two, but it does feature a Zerk fitting for grease just like the Swamp Runner does. I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but down in here, there is a hole, and around it is a bearing on this Swamp Runner kit. This one is for the long shaft that adapts the drive shaft of the engine out to the long tail shaft. And then on this Mud Skipper kit, I know it's kind of hard to see in here, but it has the pretty much same design with a bearing inside. And then down in here on the Beaver Dam kit, this one does not have a bearing inside of it. Now another difference I noticed is there's a big difference in the way that the Mud Skipper and Swamp Runner kits adapt to the long tail shaft versus the Beaver Dam kit. The Mud Skipper and the Swamp Runner over here both feature a long shaft. This part actually goes to the engine and then this connects to the long tail shaft on both of these. And this surface right here is where that bearing on the inside of the coupler rides. And it is my assumption that that is because the way this is designed being so long, they need a bearing inside of here to keep this nice and stable. Now putting the Swamp Runner adapter over here next to the Mud Skipper adapter, the only thing that I really see different is down here on the end. The Swamp Runner uses three set screws, one on this side and two on the back side to attach this first part of the adapter. And then the Mud Skipper uses two actual bolts on this side and nothing on the back. Looking at the two shaft adapters side by side, you've got the Swamp Runner over here and the Mud Skipper over here. The Mud Skipper is just a little bit smaller in diameter, but it looks like it has a little bit thicker spline than the Swamp Runner over here, but they basically attach the same way. And then you got this beaver dam kit, which has got a shorter overall length, but the splines are actually way down inside this two-piece coupler adapter right here. One other thing to note is that the mud skipper kit and the beaver dam kit both came with keyways. This is what fits on the actual engine drive shaft, and the Swamp Runner did not come with one. Just to further elaborate what I'm talking about, if you're not familiar with these mud motor kits, is this is the back side of the engine. This is where you're actually going to bolt on these couplers. So the mud skipper and the swamp runner use basically the same design. So what you would do is you would get your adapter and your keyway. Your keyway is going to fit right in here on the back side of the shaft that comes out the back of the motor. And then you would actually take this apart. 
loosen up these two screws. And then on the back side of the adapter, you'll see there is a notch. This notch will fit over where that keyway goes, which would normally be right here. You slide all this together, tighten these two bolts up. Then on the mud skipper and the swamp runner kit, since they both kind of go together the same, I'll show you. And just using this mud skipper kit as an example, once you have the shaft adapter put into place, you will take this coupler, slide it over, and make sure that it goes inside that little bearing. You just kind of got to feel around for it. Once you get it all slid into place and it's inside that bearing, you will take the bolts that are provided with the kit, and there's four of them that go around the back side of the engine, and that is what bolts this coupler to the engine itself. But then you've got to have a separate adapter for the shaft. Now this will actually screw in through here into that shaft that we put on earlier. But in order to do that, you need a special tool. And the Mudskipper kit comes with its own tool that fits in here and slides this into place. And same thing with the Swamp Runner, which comes with a tool that you use just like this, and it will slide into its coupler the exact same way. So the Swamp Runner kit and the Mudskipper kit both require their own specialized tool in order to be able to put their shaft adapters together and get their kits bolted into place. Now the coupler for the Beaver Dam is just a little bit different in design. It's a lot shorter. It still has the two-piece adapter, but it doesn't require a special tool. It has notches on each side so that you can use really big crescent wrenches or a really big wrench to tighten this together so there's no special tool needed. But it basically works in the same concept. You have a slot here that goes over the top of the keyway. This slides onto there. So then the kit comes with a bolt and the bolt goes in through here and actually attaches this adapter onto the shaft of the engine. And then this little adapter goes on the end, screws into place, and then you use a big crescent wrench to tighten these two together. And there's a, a set of slots right here and a set of slots right here and you use that to tighten them together. And then once that is on, you can slide your coupler over the top and bolt it into place. So like I was saying, the design on the Beaver Dam is a lot different, but because of how short and stubby it is, it doesn't require the use of a bearing inside of this coupler like the Swamp Runner and the Mud Skipper do. And the Swamp Runner and Mud Skipper also require their own special tools that you have to have in order to take their shafts out. With the Beaver Dam kit, you don't need any special tools at all. Now we'll take a quick look at the different weights. The Swamp Runner just the coupler itself is eight pounds, 2.4 ounces. And then with the adapter, you're looking at a total of 10 pounds, 9.2 ounces. With Mudskipper, coupler is coming in at eight pounds, 0.1 ounce. And then with the adapter, looking at 10 pounds, 4.6 ounces. And then Beaver Dam, just the coupler itself, five pounds, 9.2 ounces. And then with the adapter, seven pounds, 6.3 ounces. Next up is going to be a comparison of the handles. Now, like I was saying earlier in the video, I had to purchase a separate handle for the mud skipper, which is going to be, this is what they call a bent handle. They normally come with just this straight handle standard, but I wanted this review to be as close as possible. So we're just going to go ahead and take this one out of the equation for right now. Now looking at the three different designs, the Beaver Dam is definitely the tallest from the motor up to where your hand is going to be. The Swamp Runner is a lot lower, and then the Mud Skipper is about the same in height. It's just bent at an angle going up. The Mud Skipper and the Beaver Dam seem to be about the same distance away from where the engine is at, and then the Swamp Runner is definitely longer, about nine and a half inches longer than where both of these are sitting. Now the three of these all measure on the end right here where it actually bolts into the engine bracket they all measured the exact same at 1.06 inches and then measuring up here where the actual handles go they're all about the same 0 0.88 to 0 0.87 now the mud skipper kit did not come with any type of grip to go on the end of the handle neither on this bent one or on the straight that originally came with the swamp runner came with this grip that goes on the end of the handle and the beaver dam came with this one right here next up we're going to take a look at the kill switches and throttle controls for each one of these kits. Starting with the kill switches, we'll start with Swamp Runner. Over here, you've got a pull away type kill switch. This will actually kill the motor, so you would have this tethered to you somewhere, either on your belt or around your wrist, and this actually stops the motor, but it does not have any kind of push button anywhere on it to where you can kill the motor without having to rip this out. 
The other thing I noticed about the Swamp Runner kit is it comes with two bare ends on the wires. It's not plug and play, so you will have to provide your own electrical connections and attach this to the circuit on the motor that actually kills the motor if there was an accident and you pulled this out. Looking at the Mud Skipper kit, it also features a pull away design. It's got this little rubber plug and it pushes on this button that's down in there. And then it also has a button right here on the front that you can push and it bolts to the handle as well, just like the Swamp Runner does. Now it comes in a nice tidy wire loom. I think this is actually some kind of shrink wrap. And then it comes with the connections already on the end. One for ground and one that goes to the circuit that is going to kill the motor if you need to do so. Now Mud Skipper does include this splicing block right here. And what you do is you would take the wire that goes from your low oil sensor, run it through here, push this down and that will actually capture that wire and then this will plug into the opposite side. So it is somewhat plug and play, but it does require permanent modification to the wiring on your motor. So when you go to squeeze this down, it actually does contact and cut that wire. So that's one thing to be aware of on this one. Kill switch on the Beaver Dam actually attaches to the handle with this little eye bolt here. It does have a push button up front and then it also has the pull away just like the Swamp Runner and the Mud Skipper do as well. And then here on the back, you've got all your electrical connections and it comes with a little plug and play wiring harness that you use and it plugs on the back of these. The only thing about this is their uh, connections are actually open and they're not covered like they are on the Swamp Runner and Mud Skipper. So you may just have to take some electrical tape or something and cover those up if you're worried about making contact. The wiring harness for the Beaver Dam kill switch comes with a three-way plug-in adapter. So all you have to do is take your low oil sensor, unplug it, plug this adapter in, and then everything else is just plug and play. And of course, you'll have to put the ground in. So no permanent modification required to put this kit in. Now, taking a look at the three different throttle handles, they're all just shaped a little bit different, but they kind of mount the same way. They have a clamping system that goes around the actual bar. The only big differences I noticed uh, besides the actual shape is the Mud Skipper kit and the Beaver Dam kit both have spring-loaded handles. So like the spring-loading mechanism is already built in and on the beaver dam it's the same as well the swamp runner uh, does not it doesn't have any type of spring-loaded mechanism built in so you have to really adjust this well to get it to work on your throttle and spring back into place the swamp runner and the beaver dam are the two largest and they seem to have the biggest you know kind of purchase area for you to get your hands around it versus the mud skipper that's a little bit smaller but all of them are going to be pretty much based on personal opinion which one you like the best you just got to keep in mind that these two are spring-loaded and the swamp runner is not the other thing i know difference was the Swamp Runner and the Beaver Dam both have the handle size already built into them so there's no adapters or anything needed on the Mud Skipper kit it's much larger so it comes with this like little piece of rubber it looks like a piece of rubber hose or something that's been cut in half that you would actually have to fit around the handle and then I guess this kind of squeezes into place now the throttle cables themselves are all the same length uh, the only thing I really noticed different was the Swamp Runner kit has like these little plastic ends on both sides and then the mud skipper kit and the beaver dam both have metal ends holding the end of the outer cable in place as far as sizing goes the beaver dam is a 0.05 thickness wire the mud skipper is a 0.04 thickness wire and the Swamp Runner is a 0.04 thickness wire as well. Next up, let's look at the business end of all of the long tail shafts and the props that they come with. All of them come with a brass or bronze type end nut with a lock washer on each one of them, so that's all the same. The skeg designs are a little bit different. The Mud Skipper is the smaller of the three. The Swamp Runner is longer overall. And then the beaver dam is kind of the middle ground in between the three. Now, as far as end bushing goes, which are going to be these pieces right here on the end of each one of these shafts, they all have something a little bit different. The swamp runner up here actually came with this attached and taped to the end of the skeg here. It says that their standard bubba bushing is normally green in color, but due to limited supply, they had to change it to black. But they have a more advanced bayou bushing that you can purchase extra, which is supposedly a better bushing. And that one is normally black. So this is not the upgraded bushing. This is the standard. They just had to do it in black and if you want a better bushing you have to pay for it and install it yourself so according to the mud skipper website it's kind of the same deal as swamp runner you get the standard bushing which is some type of synthetic whether it be delrin polymer i'm not really sure because they don't specify but if you want to get the upgraded better bushing you've got to pay for it extra have it shipped to you and you've got to install it yourself and then the bushing on the beaver dam is the only one that is actually metal it is a brass or bronze type bushing and it is inside of the shaft here and looking at the end of the shaft, you can see it right there. 
So the brass or bronze, whatever you want to call it, in bushing on the beaver dam comes standard in their shafts. It's not something that you have to purchase extra and you don't have to install it yourself. It already comes with it. Another big difference that I noticed between the three kits is the mud skipper and the swamp runner. Neither one of them have any type of grease fitting or a place to put a grease fitting on the end of the shafts down here. They do on the other end, which we'll take a look at in just a second. The only one that did come with one is the beaver dam, and it actually comes with two. There's one here and one here, and then of course there's more up the shaft, which I said we'll talk about in just a minute. As far as sizing goes, the portion of the shaft that the prop actually attaches to, which is gonna be this portion here, they're all the same. They're tapered, they get you know bigger here and smaller over here so that the tapered props can fit on them. And they're all the exact same thickness, so any of the props from any of the companies will fit any of these long tails. Now for the inside shaft, the part that actually goes up the entire length of the long tail, on the Swamp Runner we're at 0.73, on Mud Skipper 0.72, and on the Beaver Dam 0.78. Now looking at the props that the kits come with, the Mud Skipper and the Swamp Runner both come with two props. The Swamp Runner comes standard with an eight inch prop and an eight and a half inch prop. The Mud Skipper kit comes standard with a seven inch prop and a seven and a half inch prop. And the Beaver Dam actually comes with three. It comes with a seven and a half, an eight, and an eight and a half inch prop. Now on the Mud Skipper kit and the Swamp Runner kit, you'll notice that both of them have kind of a shiny, almost polished appearance. They're not really polished. It's just the lighting that's reflecting off of it. They're kind of a brushed aluminum look and the beaver dam comes with more of like a bead blasted type look. I could tell you from personal experience and anybody you talk to that the speeds we're running these mud motors, polished versus unpolished does not matter. It does not affect speed whatsoever. So beaver dam is also offering something new now that I just learned about. When I ordered this kit, it came with these planing tabs and they bolt right here to these two pre-drilled holes on the skeg and you can adjust it up or down. According to the instructions, they say to use these only as a last resort if you are having issues with like a transom angle on your boat and you can't get your prop to stop popping up out of the water. They say to bolt these on, one on each side, and it comes with the holes already pre-drilled and the bolts are right there. And you can adjust this angle up and down for whatever you need it to get it to ride right on your boat. Now looking at the other end of the shaft, this is the part that actually goes into the coupler and mounts to that adapter that we looked at earlier and goes into the back of the engine. Just off camera here, I know that you can't see all of them, but the Swamp Runner does have one Zerk fitting for grease right here. The Mud Skipper does not have any on the shaft that I can see. And then the Beaver Dam has one Zerk fitting that's just right here, just outside of camera view. I'll roll it in so you can see it. It is right there. The ends are all kind of designed the same. They all have a spline type engagement. So we'll go ahead and measure the spline thickness on each one of these. The Swamp Runner is 0.12. The Mud Skipper spline thickness 0.11. And the Beaver Dam at 0.15. And last, we'll look at the shaft thickness on this end. The Swamp Runner is at 0.99 the Mud Skipper at 0.87 and the Beaver Dam at 0.94. And last, we'll look at the weights of each one of these shafts. So first up is the Swamp Runner coming in at 17 pounds, 2.2 ounces or 2.0 ounces now. It's kind of hard to balance these things up here. Next up is the Mud Skipper at 15 pounds, 7.4, 7.5-ish ounces. And last up, the Beaver Dam kit coming in at about 10 pounds, 13, 14, 12 ounces. So around 10 pounds, 13 ounces, we'll call it. As far as installation of the three kits and putting them together, it was really not that difficult at all. I'm pretty mechanically inclined and I've done these kits before, so it was a breeze for me. I was able to slap them together. But if you can follow basic written instructions and follow some videos on YouTube, you can put one of these kits together fairly easily. It's, they're not difficult at all. Now, out of all three kits putting them together, I only ran into two small, tiny hiccups going through the installation process. Let's take a closer look at both of those real quick. So on the Swamp Runner kit, I did run into one installation issue, and that was on the throttle cable. With the ends of the throttle cables being plastic, I wasn't able to use the stock screw that came Came with the Predator 420 motors from Harbor Freight to get enough torque on them to really hold them down into place. And what was happening is, is you would squeeze the throttle and that little plastic piece would just pop out. And quick and easy fix to the problem is all I had to do was find another bolt with a hex head on top so that I could actually get some grip on it and screw it down into place. I don't know what size bolt it is. Sorry, I forgot to check, but 
you gotta do is just find you a bolt that fits in there and it'll give you something really good to grip to and you'll be able to tighten it down really really tight against that plastic piece and you won't have to worry about it slipping out so here is the other issue i ran into this is the keyway that comes standard on the 420 predator motor it is also the exact same size as the keyway that you need for the beaver dam kit the Mud Skipper Kit and the Swamp Runner Kit both require a shorter keyway that's about that size. The Beaver Dam Kit came with its own keyway, so I didn't really need the one that came off the motor, so I had this one extra. The Mud Skipper Kit came with its own keyway, but the Swamp Runner did not. The Swamp Runner and Mud Skipper both require this same size shorter keyway. So, because I didn't have one, all I did was I took one of these standard ones and just hit it with a jigsaw and cut it down. So no big deal, just hit it with a jigsaw, cut it in half, that's about the size that you need, and then just make sure you file off any burrs that are here on the edge, or you can hit it with some sandpaper. That is it as far as the installation goes. Now let's talk about testing, getting these out on the water and actually running them. So we ran all three kits with the same motor on this exact same boat right here. This beautiful thing behind me is Project Bottomland Bateau. It is my 1648 Low Industries John boat. It has no deck in it, no middle bench seats, no nothing. It is just bare bones, so this was a great platform to test them all on. So we took the boat and all three motors down to my local lake that actually is fed by three different rivers. And the place that we put in that was really close to the river, so I wanted to get a feel of how they ran in the big, deep, open water and in a river scenario where there is current. And on the day we managed to be able to go to the lake and the river to test these out, it was extremely windy. There was about a 15 to 16 mile an hour constant wind with gusts up to about 20 to 22 miles an hour. The way I tested all three of these motors is I took them out into deep water. We did a top speed run to see how fast they would go against the wind and with the wind and the same thing against the current and with the current. I wanted to run the same size prop on all three of these, but unfortunately the Mud Skipper kit did not come with anything bigger than a seven and a half, so I had to run a seven and a half inch prop. The Beaver Dam Mud Runner kit and the Swamp Runner kit, I ran eight inch props on both of those, so they were all within a half inch of each other. All three motor kits performed exactly as expected not a single issue with any of them. They took a little bit of adjustment. Each one of them had to do a little bit different thing too to get them to run right. But once I got them to all run right, they ran just fine. They turned at slow speed and high speed just fine. None of them wanted to pop out of the water. I wasn't having any issues with props wanting to climb up the side of the wake. None of the props were diving down in the water. There was just no issues to speak of. As far as speed goes, which isn't really my main concern with testing these, I wanted to see which one of these is the best quality kit. But speeds were all exactly the same within about 0.4 to 0.5 miles an hour of each other. Every single one of them against the current and against the wind ran right at 14 miles an hour. And every one of them going down the river, down the current, or with the wind ran at right at 17 miles an hour. Without modifying the motor and, you know, playing around with it to try to get it to go a little bit faster. It probably can go faster, but for what we have right now... I was totally fine with the speeds that we were able to get out of it. Now I do know that some of you are going to see that I have float pods on the back of this boat. I'm going to do a complete separate video that talks all about running float pods on a John boat with a long tail. That is going to be a topic of another video. So don't clog up the comment section on this video asking about the float pods. We are going to do an entire video covering that topic. Long story short, they worked just fine. There is a ton of myths out there about float pods and running them with long tails. And we're going to cover all of that in a completely separate video. We're just focused on mud motors today. So after seeing all three of these up close and personal, checking out all the details side by side, running them all on the same day on the same boat with the same motor, they all seem to work just fine. I have nothing negative to say about any of them. So now the question is, which one should you buy and which one is the best out of the three? Now this is all purely my opinion. There's going to be, you know, the Chevy versus Ford versus Dodge people out there that are going to be like, rah, rah, whatever company, because that's just how people are. And there's nothing that I can do to stop that. No amount of showing this stuff side by side will ever change that. Uh, I like this company and they're the best. We're not getting into that. When you put all three products side by side, there is no doubt in anyone's mind that the Beaver Dam Mud Runners kit is the beefiest out of all three. So not only was the Beaver Dam kit the beefiest out of the three, it also came with the most stuff. You get the completely plug and play kill switch kit, which none of the other ones had. You had to make some type of modification to your motor to make them work. They came with three props instead of two like the other, so you're getting more props for your money. It also came with the most comfortable handle to me. Now this is my opinion. To me, 
I like the handle up high because I like to stand up when I run. So that was nice and it wasn't something extra that I had to purchase. It just came with the kit. It was the only one that had a brass or bronze end bushing and I didn't have to pay extra for it. And I didn't have to install it myself. And it came with the really cool planing tabs, which on my boat I didn't need, but it was nice to know that the, I had them in the package if I were to need them for some reason. It wasn't something that I had to purchase extra, it just came with it. Now, as far as the Swamp Runner and Mud Skipper kit goes, I have a really hard time suggesting the Swamp Runner kit to anyone because it is so close in design to the Mud Skipper kit that the Mud Skipper kit just makes more sense because it's cheaper. It doesn't appear that you're gaining a whole lot by going with a Swamp Runner kit over the Mud Skipper. So if money is your only object and that's what you're basing what you want to buy off of is how much it costs, then get the Mud Skipper kit. It's the cheapest and it ran just fine. There's no problem with it whatsoever. Unless one of these companies comes out with a newer, better design kit, then we're going to be sticking with Beaver Dam on this channel. I really like the product. It had everything that I needed. It ran just fine. I had no issues out of it. And it was the beefiest out of all of them, no doubt. Now, everything I just said is purely my opinion. And I based my opinion off the facts that I gathered through the testing of these three mud motors. So you're totally entitled to have your own opinion. And there's still going to be plenty of people that are rah, rah, brand, whatever. And if you want to see where all the hater rate is flowing, it will be down in the comment section below. Feel free to leave a comment down there. But as always, let us not forget, money can't buy happiness, but it can buy you a boat. Bye, guys.